بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الله وأكرمني من نور الله اللهم افتح علينا أرباب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزاء نعوذ منك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين As you remember, continuing our discussion about self-assessment, we started talking about غرور, about deception. And we said for this topic, we followed the book Al-Mahajjatu al by Mullah Mohsen Faiz al-Kashani, which is based on the book by Ghazali. So in volume 6, page 309, he starts a discussion which takes some time about different people who are deceived. And many times, this is self-deception. It's not that, you know, someone comes and deceives us necessarily. It's us deceiving ourselves. So, as you remember, I started with the first type of ulama and students who are deceived. So, Ahlul Ilm. Ahlul Ilm means either they are alim or muta'allim, people who are involved with learning and teaching, writing, and they can be deceived. So the first group is about the people that they have learned good amount of knowledge. They are really good scholars, but they are not practicing. They don't perform their wajibat or they don't refrain from haram. And they tell themselves, because of my knowledge, not only Allah is not going to punish me, but also Allah is going to ask me to intercede for other people who are learning from me, who are in need of my knowledge. So, this is what we said so far. Now there is explanation about their ghurur, their deception, and a kind of destruction for this ghurur. فَإِنَّهُمْ لَوْ نَظَرُوا بِعَيْنِ الْبَصِيرَةِ If with the eye of insight means with insightful eye if they were looking at their situation mm -hmm. they would have realized that we have two types of ilm ilmul mukashafa ilmul mu'amala some types of knowledge is what you learn from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about his existence, about his attributes, about his qualities and his names. Another part of ilm is ilmul mu'amala which is about what you have to do or what you should not do. What we learn about our practices. And his argument is that ilmul mu'amala, any knowledge, this is a very good point, any knowledge which is meant in order to help us in practice, if it is not practiced, has no value. Mm. When a knowledge 
is for practicing. It's a practical knowledge. It's a knowledge about what you have to do. If you don't practice it, if you don't act upon it, it has no value. And then about Ilmul Mukashafa, which is about knowing God. Yes, knowing God is good. But what is the value of knowing God and doing something against His will? Again, this has no benefits. And he mentions the example of a person who knows the king, who knows the attributes of the king, the habits of the king, what king likes, what king doesn't like, but does things that make king unhappy or angry. So, this is a summary. Now let's look at the text. فَإِنَّهُمْ لَوْ نَظَرُوا بَعِينَ الْبَصِيرَةِ عَلَمُوا أَنَّ الْعِلْمَ عِلْمًا If these Ahlul Ilm, these people of knowledge, if they were looking, if they had looked with the eye of insight, they would have realized that there are two types of Ilm. Ilm Mu'amalatin wa Ilm Mu'kashafatin the knowledge which is for action, for or interaction, and the knowledge which is for discovering. The knowledge which is for discovering is to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to know Safatihi. Okay? To know his attributes, which is normally called Ilmul Ma'rifa, for example, or today we say Ilmul Aqa'id, for example. وَأَمَّا الْعِلْمُ بِالْمَعَامَلَ كَالْمَعْرِفَةِ الْحَلَالِ وَالْحَرَامِ Ilm al-mu'amala is knowing halal and haram. معرفت أخلاق النفس To know the characteristics of the soul. The blamed characteristics المذمومة والمحمودة And the praised ones. You know what characteristics are good, what are bad, what are blamed, what are praised. Even you know, you know how to treat the nafs and these characteristics. And how to run away from blamed qualities. <coughs> okay, it's Elbe Mu'amala. Fahiya ilmun la turadu illa lil amal. This is a knowledge which is not wanted except for practice. If there were no need for acting, for practicing, there was no value. The only value that they have is that they help us in practicing. كُلُّ عِلْمٍ يُرَادُ لِلْعَمَلِ فَلَا قِيمَةَ لَهُ دُونَ الْعَمَلِ Any knowledge which is wanted for practice has no value without practice. You know, you can mention tens of examples, but because he, mashallah, has himself very detailed explanation, so I just mention his example. These people, for example, if a person is jealous, he studies akhlaq. He knows that jealousy is a bad quality. He knows what causes jealousy. He knows what is the solution and treatment for jealousy. He knows all these things. Even he may give lectures on this. He may write, you know papers or books on this. He teaches other people about this. But if he doesn't practice, what's the benefit? مِثَالُ هَاُلَى كَمَّرِيضٍ بِهِ عِلَّةٌ Their example is like a person who is ill. Illa, illa what does it mean? Sickness. Sickness, yeah. illness. There is a patient ill person who has a kind of illness 
لا يزيلها إلا دواء مركب من أخلاق كثيرة. There is no remedy, no treatment except if you use a medicine which is a mixture of different chemicals and different herbs. You know, sometimes you go to the pharmacy, he says, I have to make this medicine for you. Mm -hmm. So they have to take different things and mix it. Or even sometimes they can be herbal medicine. You know, they take different things and they put it. So this is a medicine illness that would not remove it except a mixture of different things. لا يعرفها إلا حذاق الأطباء. Only those doctors, physicians who are very, uh, you know, good, very capable, they know this medicine. It's not that every doctor, every pharmacist can give you this medicine. So, فَيَسْعَى فِي تَلَبِ tabib. He says, you know, I have such illness. They say, uh, it's not in our town. You have to go to another place. You have to travel. There is one doctor in, for example, that remote town that knows how to treat you. فَيَسْعَى فِي تَلَبِ الطَّبِيبِ بَعْدَ أَنْ هَاجَرَ عَنْ After migrating from his own place, he goes to another place looking for that doctor. حَتَّى أَثَرَ عَلَى طَبِيبٍ حَازِقٍ He finds that very capable physician. فَعَلَّمَهُ الدَّوَى he teaches him what's the medicine. وَفَصَّلَ لَهُ الْأَخْلَاطَ وَأَنْوَاعَهَا وَمَقَادِيرَهَا وَمَعَادِنَهَا الَّتِي مِنْهَا تُجْتَلَبْ And he says, in this medicine, we need these different types of materials or these ingredients. And this ingredient comes from this that comes from this place. You know, so he says everything that has to be put in this mixture. وَعَلَّمَهُ كَيْفِيَةَ الدَّقِّ كُلِّ وَاحِدٍ مِنْهُمَا وَكَيْفِيَةَ الْخَلْطِ وَالْعَيْنِ He also says that you have to make, for example, you have to blend it. You have, for example, to put oil. You have to mix it like this. Maybe you have to boil it. He says all the details. فَتَعَلَّمَ ذَلِكَ مِنْ So he has traveled. He has found this doctor. Doctor has told him everything. So he learns from that doctor. فَكَتَبَ مِنْهُ نُسْخَةً حَسَنَةً بِخَطٍ حَسَنَةً Then with a very beautiful calligraphy, he writes the prescription. Very beautiful. You can put it in a frame. وَرَجَعَ إِلَى بَيْتِهِ Then he goes back to his home. وَيُكَرِّرُهَا Every day, he reads this prescription. وَيَقْرَعُهَا He reads and repeats. وَيُعَلِّمُهَا الْمَرْضَى Then there are other people who have the same illness. They come to my home, I read for you this. So he reads for them this prescription. وَلَمْ يَشْتَغِلْ بِشُرْبِهَا وَاسْتِعْمَالَا But he doesn't take it. He just has written it very nicely and put it there and every day repeats it and tells other people about it. أَفَتَرَى أَنَّ ذَلَكَ يُغْنِي عَنْهُ مِنْ مَرَضِهِ شَيْئًا Do you think this is going to help him? Is this going to help him with his illness? Hi heart. Hi heart. لَوْ كَتَبَ مِنْهُ أَلْفَ نُسْخَةَ وَعَلَّمَهُ أَلْفَ مَرِيضَ حَتَّى شَفَى جَمِيعَهُمْ وَكَرَّرَهُ كُلَّ لَيْلَ أَلْفَ مَرَّةٍ لَمْ يُغْنِهِ ذَلِكَ Now you see also the beauty of learning Arabic. You can understand. So he says, if he writes this prescription 1,000 times, 
and teaches 1,000 ill people. And these 1,000 ill people take the medicine and they are cured. And then he himself every night repeats this 1,000 times. So he has taught 1,000 people they are all cured and he repeats every night 1,000 times. He's not going to help him. Yes, those people who have acted upon it, they are helped. But he is not helped by teaching or repeating. Yes? So what should he do? What is the solution? Illa. An yazin al He has to weigh gold. What does it mean? It means he has to take some gold from his money. Weigh, because in the past, you know, they had to give actually the gold. Mm -hmm. So he has to take some gold. Vayashtari ad-dawa. Not just having the prescription, he has to go and go and buy those ingredients and mix it as he was taught and take it. Vayasbir ala mararatihi and be patient with its bitterness. Acting upon your knowledge may not be very easy, may not be very joyful. It can be bitter. Yeah, because you have to tolerate lots of things, you know, you have to cope with lots of difficulties. Also, he should take it on time. You know, sometimes they say this medicine has to be taken midday. So even if you take it another time, it's not useful. You have to take it in the same time. And after, also prevention. So you cannot just take medicine and keep exposing yourself to the cause of illness. You have to prevent plus use the medicine. وَإِذَا فَعَلَ جَمِيعَ ذَلِكْ فَهُوَ عَلَى خَطَرٍ مِنْ شِفَاهِ Even if he does all these things, still his healing is not guaranteed. Maybe it's too late for treatment. So if you take the medicine on time and you know uh, uh, try to prevent, it still may work or may not work. What about the one who doesn't take the medicine? It's not going to work. فَكَيْفَ إِذَا لَمْ يَشْرَبْهُ أَسْلًا For him it's still not sure that whether he's cured or not. What about the one who has not taken it at all? فَمَحْمَا ظَنَّهُ so, if he thinks that just knowing the medicine is enough, this is deception. Now, this was the example of a person who is ill. Now, وَهَكَذَا الْفَقِيهِ in the case of the person who is ill and doesn't take the medicine, we all saw how ridiculous it is. Some of you laughed. But this can happen to people who are also very learned. This can happen to us. It's not something that we are immune. وَهَكَذَا الْفَقِيهِ as I said last week, not last week, last session. Uh, actually, this is about the people who have learned. Those who have wasted their life. That's another issue. These are the people who are faqih. <laughs> he has really mastered, learned properly the science about acts of obedience. He knows fiqh, he knows akhlaq. He knows uh, sins very well, but he doesn't avoid them. He knows obligations very well, but he doesn't perform them. <laughs> he knows what are disliked 
characteristics, but Lam Yosakenapsa. He has not purified himself with respect to those bad qualities. He knows very well the praised qualities, but he has not equipped himself himself with those praised qualities. So he is deceived. إذ قال الله تعالى الله سبحانه وتعالى says what says قد أفلح من زكاها who is able to reach success فلاح what is فلاح success salvation who من زكاها the one who purify has purified his soul not man alima kayfiyata tazkiyataha. Not the one who knows how to purify his soul. Knowing is not helping unless you put it into practice. Lam yaqul qad aflaha man ta'allama kayfiyata tazkiyataha wa kataba ilmaha. Allah didn't say the one who has learned how to purify himself and has written about this and has taught other people about this. These are not going to help. When this happens, shaitan comes to him. Shaitan now finds this person already suffers deception. Shaitan also comes to add to the deception. Shaitan says, "La al-misal." Don't let this example deceive you. <laughs> Don't listen to Mullah Muhsin Faizik Ashani when he is telling you about this, or your, I don't know, uh, preacher. Knowing medicine does not solve the problem, does not heal. But you are different. But you are dealing with nearness to Allah. You want to get near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know how much Allah loves knowledge. When you learn, you are rewarded. So many hadiths about the merits of ilm and ulama. We don't have hadiths about merits of knowing how to make medicine, for example. But we have hadiths about ilm, ulama. So, when shaitan comes to deceive or add to his deception, <laughs> if he is alert, he would himself say no to shaitan. He says no. Those hadiths are about those ulama who practice. Otherwise we have lots of hadiths blaming those ulama who don't practice. But if he's not alert, he would listen to shaitan. Because this, what shaitan says is pleasant and he is compatible with his own desires. Yeah? Shaitan normally tells you what you like. Shaitan doesn't tell you to do something you, that you don't like. Yeah? Mm -hmm. If you have a friend that who wants to deceive you, what would he say? He knows what you like, then approaches you through what you like. Okay? Even maybe it's not a reality, but he tells you something that you like and put you in that trouble and then leaves you. <laughs> so, Shaitan says this. If this poor person is deceived and what Shaitan says is according to his own appetites, he listens to Shaitan takes what he says, and then he's destroyed. But if he is clever, 
wa in kana kaykisa if he is clever if he is intelligent if he is alert yaqulu li shaytan he says to shaytan atudhakkiruni fawa'il al'ilm wa tunsini ma warada fil alim al fajir do you remind me the merits of ilm but make me forget those many hadith about those ulama who are not pious we have hadith we have ayah first he mentions two verses of the quran and then some hadith these two verses of the quran actually are about comparison between those who know and don't practice and mm. animals one is famathaluhu kamathal alkalb kalladhi atainahu ayatina fansalakha minha fa atba'ahu shaytan someone who was given knowledge he didn't act upon his knowledge shaytan also followed him deceived him Allah says his example is like a dog. Mathaluhu ka mathal al kalb. The ayah is Surah A'raf, verse 176. In tahmil alayhi yalhath, o tatruku yalhath. If you go towards him or attack him with bark, if you leave it, bark. So it just makes noise. Regardless what you do, just is repeating. The other example is مثل الذين حملوا التوراة ثم لم يحملوها كمثل الحمار يحمل أسفارا. سورة جمعة verse five. The example of the people who were asked to carry. You can say who were loaded, but I prefer to say who were asked to carry توراة. Yeah, they were given Torah, but they didn't carry. If you remember in the discussion about Quran, we said, what does it mean to to carry, to carry the scripture? Hamil al-Quran. Yes, Hamil al-Quran, we discussed this. So, th these are like a donkey that carries physical books, but just carries this physically. The donkey is not benefiting from the books that it carries. Yeah? Kamathal al-Himar, yahmilu aswara. Just carrying the book physically. So, he says, Ayyu khizyan a'azamu minna tamthil bil kalb wal himar. What can be more disgraceful than being likened to Kalb and Hema. Okay? And we have also Hadith. Of course, there is nothing wrong in dog and donkey. Yeah? For us to be like dog and donkey is a problem. Otherwise, we are not against dog or donkey. وَقَدْ غَالَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ وَسَلَّمْ من ازداد علما ولم يزداد هدى the one who increases in knowledge means his knowledge is increased but his guidance is not increased you know so it's not enough that you are a good people you are good people you are a good person the more you learn the better you should become. Yeah? If you remain even the same person, it's not enough. Every semester in the Jose, you should become better. Yeah? Even if you are good and you remain good, it's not enough. You have to become better. Okay? If you increase in knowledge and don't increase in guidance, لم يزدد من الله تعالى إلا بعدا. Then he has not increased except being 
farther away from Allah. He's more distant, more remote from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, it's not like other types of knowledge. Maybe other types of knowledge, if you don't practice, you don't benefit. But here, not only you don't benefit, you will actually harm yourself. Okay? But don't say now, then I don't want to learn. <laughs> That's another mistake. <laughs> now that Allah has given you this opportunity, not to learn is not an excuse. You know, remember we said the hadith that on the day of judgment, Allah says to some people, or they are told, Halla amilt. Why you didn't practice? He says, I didn't know. <laughs> then he would say, Halla ta'allamt. Why you didn't learn? So it's not an excuse to say, I didn't know. Especially after opening of Hosea. <laughs> no excuse. You have to learn. Another hadith is about Sharon Nas. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Sharun nas al-ulama usu. The worst people are bad ulama. Ulama who are not good, who are not pious. Another hadith, Ashadun nas azaban yawm al-qiyamah alimun lam ya'nfa'hullahu bi'ilmah. The people who have greatest punishment on the Day of Judgment are those ulama who have not benefited from their knowledge. So, when there is so much praise of pious ulama, there is a cost. You know, nothing comes without responsibility. If pious the scholars have so much of praise and high position, then if they are not pious also, they go very low. And he says we have mentioned this in the section about knowledge. Then he says, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And other place, Lam Yan Yeah. The same. Lam Yan means because it's Tawhid Af Ali. We attribute everything to Allah, but Allah didn't make him benefit, means he didn't benefit. Not that Allah has helped him. Tawhid Af Ali. Yes. Yes. Pardon? Yes, from Prophet Muhammad. And he says, there are many, many hadiths, aksar men and yuhsa. It's more than what you can, you know, collect and exhaust. And then he says, if he looks with the eye of iman. So that was if you look with the eye of basira. Now if you look with the eye of iman, then you see that the same hadith that talks about fazilat al-ilm, about the merits of knowledge, the same talks about bad scholars being blamed. Dhamm al-ulama al-su. Then he says, with respect to ilm al this was about ilm al so we said, whatever is related to those knowledge or disciplines or sciences which are for practice, if he's not practicing, there's no value. Even can be harmful. About mukashafa means knowing, the matter of knowing, like knowing Allah and his attributes. Again here, if you don't benefit from this, if your knowledge of Allah would not make you act better would not enable you to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then what's the benefit? Amma alladhi yadda'i ulum al-mukashafah 
the one who claims that he has those types of knowledge, which is about mukashafa, means discovering and understanding, kal ilm billah wa sifatihi wa asma'ihi. He knows Allah, he knows sifat of Allah, you know, qualities, attributes, he knows names of Allah. Wa huwa ma'adhalika yuhmilu al-amal. And still, he doesn't care about practicing. Wa yudhayyu amra Allah wa hududahu. And he under minds and underestimates Allah's commands and Allah's boundaries ashat. he is even more deceived no no not al no no the one who knows you know aqaid who knows you know philosophy irfan you know he knows all these things with that directly talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's not just fiqh he knows about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows about his qualities, about his names, he's you know, a good expert in aqaid, in fiqh, in, uh, sorry, in uh, irfan. Mithalhu, let us give you an example. His example is, كَمَنْ أَرَادَ خِدْمَةَ مَلِكٍ Someone who wants to serve the king. He says, I want to be the servant of the king. Malik. So he knows. He says, I have to know who is king. He knows the king. Yeah? Like the one who knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows the name of the king. He knows characteristics of the king. He knows the color, the shape. <laughs> How high is the king? How fat is the king? He knows, you know, for example, when the king comes, how he sits, how he runs his majlis, his gathering, his habits. He knows this. But lam ma wa But he doesn't know what king loves and what king doesn't like. What makes king angry or what makes king pleased. He doesn't know. Or he knows. But he does those things that he doesn't like. And doesn't do what he likes. He says to the king, I know you are the king. I know your akhlaq. I know your history. I know what is your age. I don't know how, I don't know how much you weigh. How much is your height. I know everything. But he doesn't know what makes king happy or he knows but he doesn't do what makes king makes king happy so he goes to visit the king and he wants to get very near to the king he wants to be one of those people who are you know he's close servants you know those especial mahsus you know those close and very you know loved ones but mutalattakhan bi jami'i ma yakrahuhu al-malik but he is polluted with everything that that king doesn't like for example there is a color in the wall that the king doesn't like and he has that <laughs> color <laughs> In, on his dress. Or the king doesn't like, for example, garlic, and he smells, <laughs> he has taken plenty of garlic, thinking that king likes this. So, he has learned many things about the king, but either he doesn't know what kings, the king is like, you know, likes or not, or even if he knows, he has not observed. He's polluted with everything that king doesn't like. And he doesn't do anything that he likes. He does everything that the king doesn't like and never does anything that king likes. He's 
ولن نسبه و اسمه و بلده و شکله و صورته و عادته فی سیاسة غلمانه و معاملة رأيته. But he says to the king, I know you very well. I know your father. I know your grandfather. I know the way you treat people. I know the way you punish, you know, the people who disobey you. He says, I know everything about you. But he just doesn't do what king likes. And does what king doesn't like. فهذا مغرور جدا. This person is also very deceived. Is low taraka jami ama arafahu. If he didn't know any of these details, just knew the king in person, just knew the king, and instead of spending too much time on knowing about his father, grandfather, his history, his you know weight and height, his hobbies, just knew a little bit about the king and instead was doing what king liked. That was better. اشتغل بمعرفته فقط و معرفت ما يحبه و يكرهه and knowing what he likes and what he doesn't like لكان ذلك أقرب إلى نيله المراد This was closer to achieving his aims and objectives. Indeed, the person who says I know Allah سبحانه وتعالى but he does not practice does not refrain from haram he doesn't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lam yakshif lahu min ma'rafatillah ta'ala illa al-asami. He just knows some names, some terms, some terminology. He doesn't know anything. Quran says what? Quran says, Innama yakshallah min ibadihi al-ulama. This ayah means two things, refer to two things. Well, one is that ulama have khashiyah. And second is that only ulama have khashiyah. He doesn't say only yakshallah min abadi min innama yakshallah min abadi al ulama. The only people who have O. Oh, or you know they feel oh you know they have kind of good fear not bad fear with respect to Allah are ulama means ulama should have this and unless you are alim you don't have that because when you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his greatness then you feel humble yeah if there is a great scholar who would respect him more ignorant people or other scholars, or at least students. But those who are not scholars and students, they don't respect him. But they don't know Elm. Yeah? Who respects Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more? Those who know him and they know his greatness. So if he really had if he really had knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he should have been different. He should not be, you know, failing to do what pleases Allah. Also, in the beginning of Zabur, okay, in the beginning of the Zabur of Dawood alayhi salam, is this sentence. Ra'asul hikmah. The head, the beginning, and sometimes ras can mean the root, the root of wisdom is to have khashya, fear of Allah. Ibn Mas'ud also says, Kafa bi khashyatillah ilm. It is sufficient as a kind of knowledge to have khashya. Means if you have khashya, you have ilm. And if you don't have khashya, you have jahla. If you are deceived, and don't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't have that respect for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you should have, this is jahl. 
it's enough, it suffices as ignorance if you don't have that khashya. Ibn Mas'ud. One of the companions of the Quran. Faizan. Al Faqih. Who is real Faqih? Man Faqiha Anillah. Amrahu. Vanahyahu. The real Faqih is the one who understands about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very well what he commands, what he prohibits. He knows about his qualities. So with respect to Allah, he should know his commands and prohibition. With respect to his qualities, he should know what he loves, what he doesn't love. There is a hadith that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for someone, He gives him few things. One of the things that Allah gives him is فَقَّهَهُ din. Or here he says يُفَقِّهُ din. He doesn't say that as a hadith, but we have in hadith فَقَّهَهُ din. Allah gives him deep understanding of religion. What is that fiqh? That is to know what Allah wants or he doesn't want. What makes him happy? What makes him unhappy? We should know. فَإِذَا لَمْ يَكُنْ بِهَادِهِ الصِّفَةِ فَهُوَ مِنَ الْمَغْرُورِينَ Unfortunately, this is a very common problem. It's not actually only about ulama or about students. Every person, to some extent, knows things that doesn't practice. Yeah? Sometimes we don't know how much we know as, for example, Muslims. You know, we understand it. But if you meet a person who doesn't know about Islam, then you know how much you know. And then, relatively, you are also alim. There are many things about faith, about akhlaq that we know. But do we practice or not? I think a sign of healthy approach. I am finishing soon, inshallah, a few minutes. Inshallah, we will discuss the next type of people who are deceived among Ahlul Ilm, inshallah, next session. So I just want to finish this part. What is a healthy approach? How can I understand that am I? For example, deceived or not? First of all, you should never be completely happy with yourself. Even if, inshallah, you are very pious, you must know that for sure there are things that still you are not practicing or you are not practicing fully. Because we human beings are very much subject to forgetting or becoming preoccupied by something and not paying enough attention to many things. For example, I want to be very respectful to you, then I may forget to pay attention to someone who is here. Or I want to be very respectful, for example, to my Family, I may forget my neighbors. I want to be respectful to my neighbors, then I may forget my family. I want to be very serious with my work, then I may forget, for example, my community. There are many, many duties that apply to us at the same time. And it's very likely that we may forget, we may not understand. And even if we don't forget and we understand, Normally, we have lack of determination to do everything in the best way. Who can say, I really utilize all my power when it comes to my acts of obedience? I pray in the best way that I can. 
I am honest in the best way I can. I help people in the best way. We are not like that. So no one should be happy 100% with himself or herself, first. Second, no one also should become despair. Because this is not also a healthy approach. Because if you become totally hopeless for shaitan. Because the one who is hopeless never tries to improve. If I am 1% good, even 1%, it's better than 0%. If in all my life I have one good habit or one good quality, even that should not be lost. But if you become despair and hopeless, then you don't bother. You know? One of the things that happened to the people who have committed sins is Shaitan says, you know, you have done so much bad things that you are in Jahannam. <laughs> and what difference it makes? It makes them you know? Do more. There is no hope for you, no chance of forgiveness. To some people, Shaitan says, your sins are not that many. Go and commit sin. To some people, Shaitan says, you have too many sins. <coughs> it's too late. <coughs> and this is greater than any sin. <coughs> so, we should never become hopeless. You should be serious, but not hopeless. So, the first point, never be 100% happy with yourself. No matter how good you are, definitely you are not acting 100% good. Secondly, never be 100% you know, critical of yourself and lose your hope. Indeed, sometimes you have to give hope to yourself. Sometimes you have to give some credit to yourself. Depending on what is your condition. If you are a person who more easily gets, you know, despaired, so you have to give yourself more hope, hope and encouragement. The third thing is that we have to be honest and sincere. Honesty implies that you are honest with people. So if you have problems, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may or may not forgive you. But if you have problems and you pretend to people that you are good, then I don't think he will forgive you. Because you are deceiving people. If I have some bad habits, and between me and Allah I have those bad habits, and I am working on them, inshallah he may forgive me. At least I can be hopeful. But if I have bad habits, and then I pretend that I don't have those bad habits and, you know, I praise myself in front of people, you know, they think, you know, that I behave in the way that they think I don't have any problem, then this is very bad. This is nefaq. Hadith says, whoever, whosoever, whose zahir is better than batin, he is munafiq. If my outward is better than my inward yes. this is monafiq so i have to be honest with people i shouldn't you know in farsi we have a example uh, expression we say sajjad shostan washing prayer mat what does it mean you know some people every day they wash their prayer mat and put it outside so that, that people say, Mashallah, this person day and night is praying and you know, his prayer mat becomes, you know, <laughs> dirty. So he has to. So we say, Sajjad Shostan. 
So you don't need to wash your prayer mat before people. You don't need you know, to pretend to people that you are better than what you are. Yeah? Be honest. Don't say your sins or problems to people because that is not also good because your reputation, your honor and dignity should be preserved. Yeah? But don't pretend to be better than what you are. You have to be honest. And the fourth thing is that we have all problems. More or less, we have problems. And only Allah knows who has more problems. Never underestimate any person by saying, I am better. We can never say, I am better than anyone. And never, you know, look in a negative way at someone that you know he has a bad habit. Maybe God forbids you blame that person. And then you will get something like that or worse than that. You know, sometimes, for example, we see people who are addicted to drug or alcohol. But we shouldn't make mockery of them. Because Allah knows that we also have maybe some kind of addictions, some kind of bad habits that we have struggled and have not been able to get rid of that. So who am I to look at them in a negative way and blame them? I can pray for them, but I cannot say I am better or they are bad people. Maybe if I were in their position, I would have been worse. In this world, in this life, which is full of struggles, you know, we are like people who are climbing a mountain. Every person somehow, apart from the exceptional people, every person is somehow stuck. Maybe I am stuck in this station, someone is stuck in another station, but we are all stuck, we are all dealing with problems. I think one of the worst things that can happen to us is to think I am better than other people. This is very, very bad. Even if someone has no faith, no Iman, I cannot say I am better. Because Iman <coughs> gives more responsibility. If I benefit from my Iman, my Iman has been good for me. Otherwise, it has become a burden for me. I cannot say because I am faithful, it's better necessarily. Because I am alim, it's better. Because I, am, I have Quran, it's better. No. It depends on what you do with this blessing. This ni'mah can become ni'mah if we are not. So we have to be very careful about judging people, about blaming people, looking down at them thinking that I am special, I am better. This is very, very bad. And also we should be knowing that if we struggle, and a struggle is not always in running, Or walking. A struggle is sometimes you run or walk and sometimes you fall. But you again stand up. This is also a struggle. Sometimes you injure yourself, but still you try to stand up and walk. If we are constantly struggling, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us. So I think it's not very important, or it's not the most important, perhaps it's better to say like this. It's not most important, the most important thing, what you are right now. I think what is the most important thing is that, are you struggling or not? If you are struggling, that shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you. 
But if you are in a good condition without struggling, that can be deception. That can be something that you may lose it. That can be a test. So, what we need to promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and what we need to promise to ourselves, is that inshallah we will keep a struggle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Those who struggle in our way, we will certainly Lam Taqid, Nun Taqid, Lanah We will certainly guide them, not only one. Way. Subulana. Not the Nahdiyanna um Sabilana. So you would see many doors will be open to you, and Allah is with the people who do good. So inshallah, we promise to Allah to try to do our best to struggle for His sake and in His way, and then we are 100% sure that He would help us. The good thing is that with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you don't need to worry about what he does. Just worry about what you do. <laughs> he is the most loyal, most reliable, and most gracious person. Just we have to be worried about ourselves and our performance. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to include us among the people who do their best and struggle in their pursuit of perfection. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us overcome all the bad habits, all the bad qualities, all the obstacles that are between us and Him. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us so that we as a group and as a community, inshallah, move fast towards Him under the leadership of Imam Zaman, inshallah. Wa akhir da'wana, alhamdulillah, rabbil alamin.